There are 11 words or phrases that I want you to watch out for in the test, be it GRE, GMAT, or other tests. And that's starting with the word consecutive. There's something I want to clarify about the word consecutive. It means in a row. It doesn't necessarily mean going up by one, which is what some people think. Yes, if it uses the phrase consecutive integers, it means going up by one. So for example, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero are consecutive integers. But as I've written on screen, it could be consecutive multiples of six. For example, six, 12, 18, or consecutive odd numbers, one, three, and five. In short, if you see the word consecutive, it just means going up by the same amount each time. And if you see the phrase consecutive integers, that's when it means going up by one each time. And that's the first word or phrase I want you to watch out for in the test. The next one is the word distinct. They'll sometimes throw that in there and people won't notice it. But the word distinct means that each of the numbers you pick must be different to the other numbers you pick. I also want you to notice, as with all the other words and phrases in this list, when they don't use the word distinct. As I've written on screen, if they ask for a set of three numbers with a median of 30, they didn't use the word distinct, meaning that each of the three numbers could be 30, because 30, 30, and 30 does have a median of 30 and a mean of 30. They never said distinct, so we can use the same number twice, three times, etc. So look out for the word distinct slash different to see whether that word is used or not used. The next word to watch for is integer slash number. This is a really important one. Does the test, the GRE or GMAT, use the word integer or does it use the word number? If it uses the word integer, it means a whole number. Could be positive, could be negative, Zero is an integer, minus three is an integer, five is an integer. However, if the test uses the word number, I want you to be really aware of that and focus on that. Why didn't they use the word integer? Why do they ask me for three positive numbers, not three positive integers? Well, by using the phrase number, they are allowing you to use decimals. An integer has to be a whole number but a number doesn't have to be. So root two is a number, 1.73 is a number. So be on the watch out. Did they say number or did they say integer? As a quick example here, Sean picks five distinct numbers between zero and five. Well, based on what I said earlier, you know distinct means different. So each of the numbers has to be different, but also they said number not integer. Some of you asking for five distinct numbers between zero and five would say, oh, the numbers have to be, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, there you go. But no, they said number, not integer. So the five distinct numbers could be 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1.2, 1.7, 1.8, for example. They don't have to be integers because they use the word number. Watch out for that. Next, for every. I only include this because some people don't know that when you see the phrase for every, they're setting up a ratio. As in the example on screen, for every man in the room, there were three children and two women. That phrase for every is setting up a ratio. For every man, for every one man, so that's one in the ratio, there were three children, so that's three on the ratio, as you can see at the end of the sentence, and two women, so that's two in the ratio. And then you'd label that ratio. But this is just a quick way of realizing they're giving you a ratio when they use the phrase for every. Next, non-negative. There's one thing I want you to remember about the word non-negative. It includes zero. It's different from the word positive. Positive cannot include zero. A positive number is 0 0.1, for example, but zero wouldn't be included as a positive number. 
Non-negative is different. Non-negative can include zero. So if on the GMAT or GRE you ever see the phrase non-negative, they are strongly hinting that zero is included and probably zero is going to be relevant to the answer. Otherwise, they'd have just said positive, which doesn't include zero. Next, must or could. And this is really important. Often in the GRE, if it's one of those tick all that apply questions, they will either use the word must or the word could. And there's a difference between them. Let me try and give you an example to explain the difference. If y is an integer, which of the following must be even? You're looking for an answer that is even in all circumstances. It must be even. Just picking one number and it works is not enough. It must be in every number you pick, you're getting an even answer. So let's take the answer choice 2y. No matter what number you pick for y, whether you pick 1, 2, 5, it has to be an integer, minus 5, you're always getting an even answer. So 2y must be even. But that's quite different to 3y. 3y could be even. If y is 2, then 3y is even. If y is 4, 3y is even. But if y is 1 or 0 0.5, then 3y is not even. So it's not enough to find one example, such as y equals 2. All of the examples must be even. So when you see the word must, think every single example must fit. So here the answer would be 2y, but not 3y or 1.5y. In every single example, 2y must be even when y is an integer, and only in some examples are 3y or 1.5y even. Notice, therefore, if the question had been could, which is the alternative word for these tick all that apply questions, then it's a very different answer. With the word could, you only need to find one example that works. So all of these could be even. 2y is always even, so that definitely could be even. If y is 2, then 3y is even, so that could be even. If y were 4, then 1.5 times 4 is 6, so 1.5y could be even. That's the big difference. With must, it must be every single example, no matter what number you pick, is correct. With could, you only need to find one example, and then you've proven it could be even. Big difference there. That brings us to the next set, odd versus even. Obviously, most of you know the difference between these two words. Odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, even numbers 2, 4, 6. But there's one thing I wanted to clarify, that 0 is an even number. It does count as an even number. And negatives can also be odd or even. For example, minus 1 is an odd number. Minus 6 is an even number. So yes, negatives count as well. And even 0 counts. 0 is even. How that might be relevant would be in an example like this. If y is a non-negative even integer, is y squared greater than y? The first trigger word, of course, is non-negative. You've learned from earlier today that that includes zero, so that's a prompt to think of zero. But some of you would have hesitated and been like, is zero even? Well, yes, it is. So even though in every single other non-negative even integer, y squared is greater than y, for example, 2 squared is greater than 2, 4 squared is greater than 4, etc. It's not the case for 0. And 0 is non-negative, and 0 is even. And because 0 squared is not greater than 0, then this statement isn't always true. Or to use the previous example, if this was a tick all that apply, which of these must be true, this would not count. It could be true, but it's not must be true, because 0 is the exception. And now let's move to talking about a couple of phrases that could be linked, which is no fewer than, and my next example will be no more than. With no fewer than, it includes the number itself. And some people get confused by that. If I ask for no fewer than four bananas, I want four bananas or more. So greater than or equal to four. Notice how that's different to more than. If I ask for more than four bananas, I can't have four bananas. That's not satisfactory. But no fewer than means I want that thing or more than that thing. 
For example, if there are no fewer than five coins in my pocket, there are five or more, greater than or equal to five coins in my pocket. You can see how that's different from me saying there are more than five coins, which would be six or more. Linked to that is the phrase no more than. No more than means less than or equal to. If I say there are no more than 10 coins in my pocket, that means that there are less than or equal to 10 coins in my pocket. Or in the example on screen, having no more than 21 points means less than or equal to 21 points. Different from the phrase less than. If it was less than 21, it would just be simply less than and not including 21 but no more than 21 means less than or equal to. If you're unfamiliar with these phrases, do feel free to pause the video and write down a few examples yourself. But there are two more quick words I want you to watch out for. This one's a fairly easy one. And obviously most of you will know that positive means greater than zero and zero is not positive. But I also want you to watch out for something. Watch out for when they don't use the word positive it's easier to miss when they omit the word positive. Sometimes your brain reads the word positive into a question when the word positive wasn't actually there. Take this example. If y is an integer, is 3y greater than 2y? And some people in their brain would think that because they're saying integer, it must be positive. No, they didn't use the word positive, so we can't assume y is positive. So this statement is not true because y could be a negative integer like negative two, and minus six is not greater than minus two. So I know you know what the word positive means, but I'm also saying that yes, zero is not positive, and notice as well when they don't use the word positive. That's often a common trick in the GMAT and GRE. And finally, prime. I've talked about this in other videos, but I strongly recommend you memorize the first 10 primes off by heart, as seen on the screen. And note down one thing about the word prime. There is only one even prime number, and that's two. Also note down, if you're confused, one is not a prime number. It doesn't count as one, whereas the number two is a prime number, and it's the only even prime number. Some people think prime is synonymous with odd, but that's not the case. A prime number is one that has two distinct factors, itself and the number one. And that brings me to the end of this list of the 11 words or phrases to watch out for. I really hope it was helpful. Do let me know.